Conference, five years ago, this motion would have ruined my life. When I was 10, I discovered fanfic. If you don't know, fan fiction is online stories written by fans using characters from films, books, and such like. It's often, but not always, adult in nature. In one of these fanfics, there was a throwaway line about a gay character. My reaction was to physically cover the screen with my hands and look around to see if my parents could see. That day, I figured out, on our giant ageing Windows 98 desktop, how to delete my internet history, just in case. When I was 14, an old hatter computers by now, a pro at deleting my history and finding proxy sites to cover my tracks, I started writing it myself. I unknowingly poured a lot of myself into those stories, waxing lyrical about characters who were figuring themselves out, what they liked and what the world thought of them. And these stories went online, sharing, spaces, sharing space with pieces that had more adult themes, and so all tarred with the same brush. When I was 17, and come on, you're supposed to have figured out yourself out by 17, right? I ended up doing it all again, finding a whole community dedicated to writing about asexual characters. I hadn't even realised asexuality existed before. And yes, I do know how weird it is to credit literary porn with discovering the oh-so-radical idea that it's not okay, it's okay not to feel the need to have sex. But no one told me. The thing is, with a background like mine, small, isolated city, vaguely rural, military family, I wasn't going to learn it anywhere else. More to the point, the idea of not being straight wasn't something I could even consider. So I didn't have the luxury of accessing any teenage self-help sites, which would probably be filtered out anyway under this motion. I had to learn through osmosis. I had to trick myself into not believing I was learning. And trust me, I am not the only one. By some freak of schooling, I've had sex education seven times, ranging from the, this is how your body will change in year four, to, I realize you're all doing it in year 13. <laughs> Do you know how many times that consisted of something other than insert tab P into slot V? <laughs> Once. <laughs> and not one lesson either. This was one class, a single conversation, consisting of a debate on the genders used in song lyrics. I'm, sh I'm sure you'll all agree that is incredibly relevant to the worries of all LGBT kids. So, where else am I, and thousands of other kids in the same situation, supposed to turn? Because if you won't ask your parents for help, you're sure as hell not going to ask your teachers. I found out everything I know about sexuality via fan fiction, something that this motion would filter and block. I had no other choice. So that's an educational failure, yes. But implementing these filters punishes children who are otherwise completely alone. I am a young person. This conference is full of young people. We have a whole group dedicated to representing young people. So stop talking at us and start talking to us. I'm 20 now, so I know this motion aimed, isn't aimed at me anymore. But I know that there are still kids growing up thinking how I did, and there will continue to be for generations to come. Don't take away their only research tool. Don't leave them alone in the dark. Because for God's sake, it's hard enough being a teenager anyway. So stop being scared of having awkward conversations with your children and vote against this motion. Thank you very much indeed, Chairs. And, uh... That was another first time conference speech. Would Susan Gashat from Watford please?